and welcome back and we have a full house to close off the show for today as we talk about the Belize International Film Festival. As we said earlier in the show, uh, the opening night was last night, so uh, these guys are essentially recovering from the party <laughs> but we get to find out a bit about the films uh, that have been that are going to be a part of the festival and a little bit about what people can expect and how they can enjoy uh, this event that has been put together for us mm -hmm. so we have with us Bernardo Ariano who is the director of El Comienzo del Tiempo mm -hmm. uh, which and you're from Mexico Yes. Uh, we have Ilana Lapid, who is the director of Yochi Film, and this is the Belizean film, uh -huh. uh, actually, and it's spoken in Maya. Yes, perfect. That's right. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, we have with us as well, Professor Gabriel Gonzalez, who is the representative for Presos, and that is a Costa Rican entry. And we have Communication and Marketing Officer for Niche, Holly Edgel. Good morning, everybody, Good morning, guys. and thank you for Good being morning. here. I want to start off just finding out, uh, you know, there was the big red carpet gala last mm -hmm. night and the opening of the festival. We had it on uh, 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 airing live on Channel 5, but we didn't all get to participate. So let's just talk about uh, the opening and how the festival got kicked off. Sure, sure. Well, one of the things that, that's most gratifying is it was the f it was a fun vibe. It was mm -hmm. it was a friendly vibe. A lot of the um, filmmakers were saying how much fun they had, and that's really good. So yeah. we had the red carpet. We had glamour uh, in terms of what the fashion people what people were wearing. Um, we had a huge uh, contingent from Kaya from Ilana's film Yochi, including the stars, um, come, and they were just. The, they stole the show. Little little Carrie was pretty much everyone's uh, uh, idol, mm -hmm. you know. So it was an amazing event. We had the Minister of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture. We had the Mayor of Belize City. We had dignitaries. Um, some ambassadors were there, and um, and just film buffs. You know, I was along the red carpet trying to ask people. Who, who are you? What are you here for? Why are you here? And some of them were just, we're, we love movies. We're, we're Belizean. We're proud to, to have this festival here. And, and so we, we did the red carpet. We had pa food from Miss Debs. She passed. They had these wonderful yeah. little hors d'oeuvres. The li <coughs> Lions Club was there with the bar. Um, we had a little tinkling music in the background. And then we had our opening ceremony, which people saw on TV last night. And um, huh. people were just, um, just had a great time. We, then we showed our films. And um, the Q and A, and, and so it was just a really great night. And Suzette Zaiden, our our director, I think I hope she's basking a little bit this morning <laughs> with a little bit of feeling like okay, mm -hmm. well, I'm sure good. With much frenetic energy because it's just the start. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I want to I want to get into uh, some of the guests that we have here mm -hmm. in terms of uh, those who have submitted into the festival. Um, let's start with Ilana. Ilana, your movie was screened last night, and I want to get. Uh, the film is called Yochi, and uh, I know we've been told several times about it, uh, that it is uh, a Belizean, it's filmed in Belize, uh, there's some Maya in it. Um, let's just talk about your concept and uh, what prompted you to be able to produce this. Yeah, so in, uh, in March I was invited to direct a feature documentary about the endangered yellow-headed parrots. And I considered it, but since I'm, I'm not primarily a documentarian, I decided not to do it, but I was thinking about the yellow-headed parrots, and that's when I had this idea about this small boy who guards a nest of endangered yellow-headed parrots in the pine savanna. And I had spent two summers in Belize already, wow. uh, leading a, a courses of students making documentaries in villages in Cayo. So I was already familiar with that region, and mm -hmm. I had connections with people that uh, were involved in film, mm -hmm. uh, including our line producer Aaron Beavis and our producer uh, Daniel Ven Velasquez. And so I got in touch with them to see how feasible would it be to come down here and make a film as a U.S. Belizean co-production. Yeah. Um, and so I wrote the script in April and uh, started the pre-production, and in May was down here shooting. Wow. So, you know, uh, when it comes to when it comes to filming in Belize, we've got uh, natural wonders like we've been mentioning. How how difficult was that for you? How easy was it for you after putting up a script together and then uh, coming down to Belize and then making sure that you know we, we've got some good work coming up here? How how was that for you? Well, um, I, I was uh, really pleasantly surprised and just thrilled actually about the, the team that we put together uh, in Belize, the Belizean filmmakers that were involved and just put their heart into the project. And uh, the biggest thing was casting. 
because um, we have not worked, the whole film is comprised of non-actors. Mm -hmm. And so I had cast Kerry before I came to Belize for, I, because we had our producer found him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a, the son of a, a Belizean artist, Jorge Landero. And so I knew that we had this boy, but we didn't have the older brother. And so I actually uh, took a loan, you know, I came out here without the actors and said, you know what, this is going to happen somehow. And I spent uh, 10 days before the production just uh, with the line producer and the producer just going through the villages and you know, auditioning and stopping people in the streets and stepping a you know man on horseback and saying yeah. like, do you want to audition <laughs> and we finally three days before the crew arrived we found our lead actor Evan wow. Martinez to play the older brother so we we're very lucky and Yochi what does that mean Yochi uh, means hope in Mayan but as wow. it turns out in Yucatec Mayan uh, it means shadow so wow. It's really interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ah, so that's a double meaning there. Double meaning, both appropriate. <laughs> yes. So it's, you're working with non-actors. That's one of the things mm. that you pointed out. But also you're working with a child. And yeah. uh, that's, uh, there, there are good aspects to it because they're enthusiastic. But it's also a bit challenging as well, especially if they have no experience. Yeah. What was it like working with your uh, main actor? With Carrie. Yeah, yeah. He, and he was nine at the time that we shot the film. Oh. And he had the added challenge of uh, acting with no dialogue because he, uh, his character is selectively mute. So he, only, he hardly speaks in the film. So it was really all about his face. And I had to work with him to help him to make the story relevant to his own life. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a lot of un, um, uh, not, not so conventional uh, approaches to like rehearsal, for example. We rehearsed in the river. Mm -hmm. So I just had them both swim, you know, mm -hmm. and, and play around. And then they, we read the script several so times and we discussed all the scenes, but in the end, the whole film is improvised. You know, as you speak, I could actually see what you're talking. <laughs> uh, so how difficult was it, especially when it comes to uh, the parental guidance? Because you're working with a child. What was yeah. that like for you? Yeah, well, we were really lucky that Jorge, uh, uh, Carrie's dad, was totally on board and was on the set the entire time him and his uncle so they were there and that was really helpful for the boy but uh, there were times that he was tired you know at the beginning he said wow this is so cool and then after like the first two days like okay that's good I'm <laughs> <laughs> no but then he was such a good sport and uh I think that the whole crew was uh, trying to make him feel good and make him feel safe and play games with him and we had all kinds of games going on and uh, so it worked out and um, I, I'm really pleased with uh, both, without the whole cast. We also had Maria Garcia who's a Mayan artisan and she's had her work at the Smithsonian oh. and she is living in San Antonio village as well and so she played the grandmother. Okay. Wow. So, so we're going to get into the reactions from last yeah. night but I also want to talk to the other filmmakers yeah. as well. Bernardo. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, your film. Well, the film is uh, The Beginning of Time. Uh -huh. um, the film is about a couple of elderly, uh, more than 19 years, uh, who have, uh, suddenly in the country uh, the pensions are uh, quit and they have to start to, to, to look how they survive. Mm -hmm. the, their, their sons are uh, really a part of them, they didn't see them. So they need to start to work uh, for n more than 19 years now and in a really difficult city. And, uh, and I try to build a, like it's like look inside the, the, the life in the elderly, you know? I, I really interested on that. Uh, I also work with non-actors. Mm. Ah. So I build a, a world full of, of, of elderly. All of the characters are elderly, and uh, it's like a, a city full of elderly. And uh, and uh, I, I try to 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 express the how they feel. A, a, a really uh, personal point of view mm -hmm. about the the life and elderly. So I uh, work. Um, I made a um, and, um, like a. But uh, Taller, uh, I mean, um, I worked with them uh, for a couple of months mm -hmm. and, uh, and show them how, how, they, how the cinema works mm -hmm. and how, how, you, how you can make a, a film. And, uh, and I, uh, I, I want they express how they feel, uh, all, all the difficulties they live. And, 
and go really uh, near with them. The camera is always uh, on the hands, on mm -hmm. the way they, they, they walk, mm -hmm. everything, uh, how they make love. Uh, it's a risky film also. Really? <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I think uh, the result really interest uh, uh, for the world because uh, I think uh, this, this troubles had all the other religions in, 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 in all the society. So the, the film works really well and, uh, no, it's, uh, and it's, uh, has a lot of tenderness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's an important story to tell that we don't talk about very often, the life of the elderly. Mm -hmm. uh, why was that something you wanted to capture? Well, uh, I had a feeling that uh, when, when, when we arrived to the, to the, to the elderly uh, life, uh, you're, you're out from the from the production system, and it's like a, you you don't exist. It's like a, the family sometimes is also a little bit uh, unconsciously, but but it's like a, the uh, the grandfathers uh, doesn't uh, take the decisions, and the, and the family are a little bit away from from all, uh, all the life of of the others, and uh, it's like a put the, uh, the dimension and the importance that, that you sacrifice all, all your life for, for the others and, and then you're out of from, from the family, you know, the from family decisions, like a little bit cruel, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I try to decide something to, to give up the dignity and the uh, importance of, uh, of the life in, in the elderly. And, uh, it's also a funny film. It has a dark comedy, mm -hmm. but also it's a tremendous drama for moments. And it's uh, I like the film. It's a roller coaster of emotions, I think. Uh -huh. from, uh, actually, yes. from from the the name that you've got for it, which is uh, El Comienzo del, del Tiempo, it it, it complements for the fact that you're working with elderly people. The film is actually about them, but it's the start of the time. Yeah. So how do you how do you mix that? Because it, you know it's it. I tried to put it together. You have to be. You really have to be thinking to get the. Was it difficult to work along with the elderly? Um, yes, but uh, for me it's always a, a, an exp a human experience. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, start to work with a, with a non-professional actress because they uh, they put the, the all all they've got. You know? so. You, you have to, to, to take out this, these qualities because I, I'm going to the streets with this eye of director you know, yeah. looking for my characters. So I tried to, when I found them, I, I made a cast for six or seven months. Uh, but when I found them, I worked with them a lot and tried to put all these uh, good qualities of, of natural acting yeah. they had. Yeah. And, uh, Tonio, uh, start, uh, Tonio, the main character, uh, he has 92 years when I discovered him. 92? So, yes. Wow. And, <clears throat> and he yeah. made a, a really uh, uh, performing no? So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. so um, he never looks at the camera. He's so natural. All yeah. his dialogues are really well. And, uh, and, and he... Uh, he can uh, remember all the dialogues. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing thing. Uh, but uh, the concentration is like about five hours. Uh, we shot only five hours a day, really um, taking time. Okay. And uh, I, for me, uh, they, they show that? me more things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I discover a, a, a lot of things for, of yeah. me and of my family. And uh, because I, I don't have the luck to, to have my grandfathers uh, near. Uh, so, for me, this film is also important. Yeah. Where that. did you shoot it? In Mexico City. In Mexico, yeah. in Defe. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, and we're only seeing snippets of it from the um, trailer that's running. Mm -hmm. But one of the things about working, especially with elderly characters, is that their face alone can yes. have so much drama. It's just uh, how they express themselves. Uh, you said they're non actors. Um, was it just. Uh, an instinct in meeting the characters that you ended up casting. You saw them and you knew that was the look, that was the face that you wanted to work with. I'm looking expressive faces. Yeah. Um, you can see the time and yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, that, and that experience, it's very important for me because, uh, you know, uh, 
all the all the time, all the all, all the mm -hmm. life, all the all the sacrifice that the the grandfathers do it for for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's a really important thing uh, to to value and try to to recover it and put mm -hmm. it in a film. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Professor Gabriel uh -huh. Gonzalez, representative for Presos. Tell us about it, a Costa Rican entry. Tell us about it. Uh, yes, uh, well, I've been working for 20 years with this director, uh, Esteban Ramirez Vino. Kind of alter ego, I'd say, and uh, very <laughs> close to him uh, as a co-producer, or in this case, as an advisor and also in charge of communications. And uh, we are very happy about being able to make this film because we shot most of the film in a prison. And we do mm -hmm. need uh, the support of uh, oh. the inmates. I mean, anytime they could say, no, we don't want this movie to go on, mm -hmm. and that was it. But nevertheless, it worked. And uh, actually, uh, except for the protagonist and another guy, all these uh, uh, people we see in, in the movie in the jail are the real people. And actually, there are no sets for the movie, but everything is what it is. And uh, we have uh, a lemma for the movie. Uh, we say that everybody is in prison. Mm -hmm. Some people are behind bars and some people are outside. And uh, those behind bars, they had some kind of clash with society and that's because they are there. And it's a uh, whole the world uh, extremely complicated in many ways. But also people outside, they have their own traumas, their own problems. So we have this girl uh, who is in trouble with her, her dad because something that's extremely usual in Costa Rica, he just walked out with another woman and abandon the family, mm. and uh, this happens all the time. And uh, then she has also some financial problems, and she has this uh, boyfriend who's very bossy with her and tries to dominate her, which also is very usual. <laughs> and, uh, and then just she gets in touch <laughs> with this inmate, and uh, she's kind of trying to break free from her situation, and she falls in love with the inmate. Mm. So the, the core of the movie is between uh, this relationship between the both of them but especially for her it's it's so risky and so complicated and so we kind of show uh, many of the most uh, uh, relevant um, social problems yeah. to the movie in this kind of weird love story and I, I won't tell the end and it's also an open end <laughs> but um, I think it's very very compelling and uh, the movie has been around many many film festivals yeah. and uh, has uh, reaped several awards and it was also Costa Rica and uh, most important movie, our selection for the Oscars, for the Ariel, for the Goya, yeah. and actually uh, won the, the major uh, film prize in, yeah. in Costa Rica. But it's an interesting, interesting combination of uh, professional actors. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the guy actually after Presos went to work uh, for Netflix with this Narcos. very famous series Narcos. Narcos, oh. he was, I saw uh, him, yeah. Escobar's uh, yes. best uh, He was the guy. last one standing yes, with Escobar. Right. That's it, face. that's it. And uh, the actress, uh, she's a very, very good professional young actress. Yeah. But then you have all these inmates. I think they're really wonderful yeah. acting themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can be shy, or you can, as, as you mentioned. But uh, you can be, I, I don't know, these, these people in jail should try acting after <laughs> that. <laughs> if they are able to, to go out of jail because, uh, but then they show you the world, which is not, for example, like seeing an American prison in all these TV series. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's quite different. Yeah. And it's very harsh, but not as awful in a certain way. There's, there's something very tender, something very nice. And people told us in Costa Rica, well, we, we love to be able to go into the jail and see how people actually live there. And, they, and for example, when their uh, family visits them, or how they eat, or how they play, and so on. Yeah. So you did mention, though, that this movie has won some awards. So how long ago uh, did you shoot this movie? Oh, uh, the movie uh, was shot in the 2014. Okay. Okay. And it was kind of ended by September. And then we stayed until about uh, April, just doing a small change. Just, oh, we, oh, we should do this. Oh, we should, oh, we should check this. <laughs> and so on. But it finally, it came out in Malaga, a uh, festival mm -hmm. in Spain in, okay. in uh, May last year. And from there, I mean, uh, I went to Santander, with, uh, it won a couple of awards, and uh, I, I went to Trieste with the movie, which was very nice. I was telling uh, my ambassador that I uh, called all people around the cinema house, and we actually won the audience award. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to fool the house, <laughs> 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 the people I, I call and so on. But uh, um, 
we had very nice uh, reception. In Costa Rica, about 70,000 people saw it. Okay. And it's very difficult because we have this tremendous fight with Hollywood uh, of course. movies. Of course. Yeah. So it's extremely difficult, so we were very happy and a very, very nice comment. And of course, I love people from Belize. This is such a warm and beautiful place yeah. to go see the movie. Today, Today. Friday, yes. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me jump in here. Yeah, I, I think that's one of you, what you pointed out just now, the competition with Hollywood is really oh, uh, an important part of the conversation we have to have. And it's why film festivals are important. And it's why Belize's film festival for us is so important. One, because we get exposure to people who have decided we have a big uh, competitor that we'll never be able to compete with in terms of budget, in terms of time, in terms of all the production amenities that they'll have, but we'll do it anyway. Oftentimes, uh, sacrificing your own money, your own time, um, and getting persons who are perhaps not trained to be a part of an actual production. So let me ask you, uh, before we talk about why you enter the film festival, what would you tell uh, other producers, people in Belize, where there is a very small, I, mean, I think small is an exaggeration, industry. What would you tell them about going ahead and producing a movie, uh, especially if there's a storyline perhaps that's unique to your culture uh, or something that you wanted to capture that it kind of isolates the issue, um, but to go ahead with it either way? What would you say to them? Well, they certainly should. I mean, a country, we, we say a country with no cinema is a country that doesn't know itself. Mm -hmm. and we, we must do it. And producing is difficult, but distributing and exhibiting is more difficult. <laughs> actually, that's why film festivals are so extremely important. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, in Latin America, actually, I think we're doing almost like the best cinema in the world. And uh, one thing that's helped a lot is bringing uh, countries together for production, at least. Mm -hmm. So most movies are co-produced by several countries. Okay. We did in prison with Colombia, and that helps because you have uh, some more money and, and then you have uh, all the technicians, all the artists, and so on. And then we have to keep fighting to find our way into the cinema houses, which is the, actually the mm -hmm. hardest, yeah. hardest part. And in that sense, governments should be much more aggressive uh, yeah. Not censoring Hollywood movies, but giving us, uh, giving us a chance. Because we really tackle the issues people are interested in. I mean, yeah. people really mirror themselves in the movies. And not, I mean, with all these weirdos coming <laughs> with the special effects in the Hollywood movies. <laughs> have nothing to do with people's real lives. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's also important to have a, uh, a school of cinema because mm. uh, the formation is also important. It's not like I only take the camera and the yeah. sound. Yeah. You need to, to, to teach the language and, and, and you need to teach uh, how to appreciate the cinema because mm -hmm. that takes a, a time. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, an important thing is to start with a school of cinema and, or courses or I don't know, something to, and bring people uh, the, the possibilities to, 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 to learn about cinema, no? The, yeah. the, the, the young guys, it's uh, they're really important. The, the, the it helps the to build the appreciation mm -hmm. as well. Yes, yeah. that's really that's important. A, that's, a, that's another side benefit of a film festival because we have some very, we don't have a school of cinema, but, we, but at the symposium today and tomorrow, we're gonna have ex experts who can impart some knowledge as a little bit just as maybe plant a seed yeah. you know um, if you want to be a documentarian here are some things you need to think about yeah. if you are um, producing a music video which is a really thriving little industry within yeah. what we're doing um, you can get that but also just I hope that when people come and they, they mingle at the bliss with our visitors, yeah. they can just get some sparks yeah. of something or they see a film um, yeah. and they say oh my gosh that I, I, I'm really yeah. intrigued by how you did that mm -hmm. and then have that conversation go so that maybe we will get to a point where we have more courses or we can do something mm -hmm. um, to keep that training going because I think what we do in Belize a lot is we improvise because yeah. we just want to do it we want to create we, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's in us to do and so it's, it's sort of trial and error but if you have the trial and error but you also have a framework of education yeah. knowledge then you can s maybe start to spark something you know. Now Elena so, your story mm -hmm. especially I think yeah. is, is so important because you made the decision to come to Belize to shoot and tell a yeah. story which 
I mean, I don't, I'm sure you know, uh, is actually very realistic. The Friends for Conservation and Development do exactly from what you told me. I haven't seen the movie. This young boy does, which is man a tree so that the Guatemalans don't come over and poach or, or baby <laughs> macaws. So, uh, in fact, one of those uh, six people that founded that initiative is the consult was the consultant on our film. Ah. So oh, okay. that's really how it began, is with this kind of conservation okay. agenda. But it was important for me to tell a story that stood on its own and wasn't just an issue film. Yeah. But I think that um, it's different with short films than it is for feature films. Also, in terms of financing, we're talking about a smaller amount of money. You're not doing it necessarily to get money. Get money. Yeah. back afterwards um, but it's also a lot more accessible for people to if you can put together a crew um, I think that the festival is so important also for networking here for people here to you know if you put together a small crew and you have a, you, a shared vision then it's it is within reach to make a short film yeah. I would love to see, I mean, you know just having you here and then thinking about all the other people some kind of way of partnering, Belize partnering with multiple countries yes. um, and taking advantage of saying, you know what, because just, just in like last night I heard, we heard Sandro from, um, from Mexico talking about my, my company, we want to help you, we want to support you. Yeah. Partnering, you know, opportunities. internship opportunities. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for example, uh, last night when I saw her move, I was telling her that I um, mean, Costa Rica has done a great job uh, trying to protect nature and uh, there's a very strong environmental movement and the government has gone really far uh, protecting our country in that sense mm -hmm. and uh, I said well her movie has a lot to do with uh, yeah. what we're working for and yeah. people in Costa Rica will be most interested in having that movie using yeah. it for educational purposes and so on and then of course the, you can think a little further away and maybe we could come together for example doing movies like this one. Mm -hmm. Now it, it's so important and I think you, you one of you said uh, something that stands out to me, and it's about the identity that is represented in the film industry. Uh, we want to see ourselves. You know, we struggle with local programs, with cable and Hollywood, and uh, it's the same with movies. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we want to see ourselves reflected on television. Interestingly, I, I got a message uh, yesterday from a friend of mine who said, you know, I want to see the news in Creole, and it really <laughs> reminds me that sometimes we just want to hold on to yes. what is unique to yeah. us. Yeah. When I yes. heard it, I thought that, that I knew there was going to be Mayan, but I thought yeah. the rest of the film was going to be in English. Uh -huh. And then when I was working with the actors, uh, Evan, who plays the older brother, he said, you know, I feel more comfortable. I think this scene should be in Creole. Creole. Uh -huh. And so that's sort of how I said, okay, let's... What was that know. like for you? Um, I mean, I, I really felt like for me coming into another country, I'm not Belizean. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I wanted to make sure that um, it was as authentic as possible and that I was working with um, the actors and that they were um, yeah. interpreting the, the story in a way that was relevant to them. And so I thought, I thought it was really great. But, you know, then came the decision of do we subtitle the film or not? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we subtitled the Creole, but do we subtitle the whole film? And there are all sorts of cultural, you know, that yeah. I mean, that it's a question that. But but in in the U.S., we found that audiences needed the film to be of subtitled, course. and yeah. so that's yeah. what we decided to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, for example, in prisoner movie, uh, dance is very important, popular dance, mm -hmm. yeah. which in Costa Rica is truly important. So it's this kind of part mm -hmm. of what's going on, and it's a way of uh, people meeting themselves. And uh, <clears throat> we also show through the movie, I mean, like the places, the foods, the clothes, and so on. So Costa Ricans say, oh, okay, it's, it's this. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. I mean, and so they love and it. And a sense of pride. Yeah. And then also, of course, we want other people to know the way we live and all our, our, our uses and moods and so. Yeah. And so the movie is like an ambassador in that sense and yes, helps communicating yes, and breaking barriers and so with other countries. And I other don't want to lose the opportunity quickly running yeah, out of that, time. That, <laughs> Why did you choose to enter the Belize International Film Festival? It's your 11th year. Uh, I know that uh, there's an open call and there has been a growing momentum behind it. But as individuals uh, not from Belize, why did you choose to enter your film in this festival? For me, uh, it's really important to have connections with Central America now. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have partners in the north now. So, um, That's a <laughs> 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 so now um, uh, for me, it's really interesting to know the, the the culture of Central America because in Mexico w we're borders, but uh, we had a lot of distance. So for me, uh, uh, get in and, and try to to see how is the life here and how I start to develop the the the, the, the cinema here. 
and we want to make connections. Uh, also, you know Sandro, and we're interested in in good relations here. You know. And what would you what, what what would it mean for you to be the winner? What would it mean for you to win? Um, I don't know. Uh, win? It's not in my. Uh, <laughs> it's not in your agenda. <laughs> it's not in my it's agenda. It's what like you've got. Nice. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, the prizes are important, but the most important is the connection with the people. Yes. It's it's the way you. What do you want you people to experience in your film? I hope they they uh, want, want. I hope they not go indifference. Uh, okay. I, I I hope they they can be reflected on the film mm -hmm. about their lives and, and that's the yeah. important thing for me, you know, make the connection, the emotional connection yeah. and sometimes you can express it with words but you feel something and mm -hmm. some try to change something inside, yeah. no? Nice. Yeah. So when I actually came up with the idea I thought Oh, it would be so nice to go make a movie, come back and premiere at the Belize International Film Festival and share the film um, <laughs> with Belizean audiences and with the cast and crew and have them get to have that experience. So from the beginning it was something that I was dreaming about. So it was really meaningful to get to come here and see that happen yesterday for the yeah. opening night and bring in those, you know, that bus with the okay. 25 uh, casting people, cast and crew for that. What them was the reaction see. last night? Um, I think, I mean, it was, I was That's a nerve-wracking right experience for you. It was, yeah. Uh, I, I think people like the film and I know it was a really meaningful experience for, uh, for my cast and crew and the father of the boy that was in the movie came yeah. and thanked me afterwards and yeah. said this was really a transformative experience for I my son. From, from it's hard for you to probably be objective about the reaction, but <laughs> it was a very warm reaction. I think people, like you said, we love we, we, to see ourselves and to see our culture and parts of our own country maybe we don't know about yeah. or things we don't know about. But um, as you know, Belizeans can be a tough audience, mm -hmm. you know. But we heard some actual vocal um, whoops and, and cheers and, and, um, and that was great. For, my feelings were were validated because I was feeling the emotion of the film too. Well, so. we're notorious noisy movie watchers. I don't know if you all know that about Belize. <laughs> oh yes. and Yochi. No, people were. Uh, oh, I, you okay. know, people were just uh, sort of just immediately brought in. Brought in. I think I think Carrie's face. Yeah. You did a great job with that because there was he, he said like five words in the whole film, <laughs> but his face and the, the way you shot it and even the birds seemed to have character, you know, <laughs> um, and so and so you just had this hush right in the room where people were just really warmly um, and then and then it's like it was done and we wanted more, you know. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> and actually, just on that note, I mean, it's really a, a dream of mine to come and do a feature here. So I'm hoping that this film will make that possible. To continue building towards that. And finally, you, Professor? Uh, yes. No, uh, of course, we try to go to as most festivals as we can because we want people to see the movie, but Valise is so close and in such a way so far away. So with great help from our embassy, we are here very happy for the second year in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do think the movie uh, will make people really think about themselves, the decisions, the way they act in life, the different situations, and try to break those bars. Yeah kind of uh, uh, upholding them. So uh, we're uh, extremely happy uh, to be here and to support the festival also, and uh, certainly uh, desiring most people possible to go and see and enjoy the movie. And I'm gonna be there to talk about it, so. Right. Tell us when we can, I wanna see all these okay. movies. They all touch me on a certain level from the. Well, the yeah. good news is you can see Yochi again, okay. or for the first time, <laughs> if you want, okay. tonight. We're going to take the film to Cayo, okay. which is going to be home turf for many of the people involved. Okay. We're going to be at the Welcome Center. That's going to be at 7 p.m. We're showing Yochi and Voices of Latin America, Voces de Latino America, and that's an Argentina, uh, an Argentina I think, uh -huh. selection. That's going to be starting at 7. Um, it's hosted by Ben. Um, by San Ignacio House of Culture, Santa Ana House of Culture, but it's at the Welcome Center. Okay. So that's tonight at 7. Then we have tonight at 8.45, Imprison <laughs> Presos. Uh, that's at Bliss, and that's at 8.45, right? Mm -hmm. And then for our, our, our uh, El Comienzo del Tiempo is actually um, Saturday, 6 p.m. 
at the Bliss again. Um, the great thing here, uh, to me, I feel like the festival is a bargain. You know, okay. we spend a lot of money on entertainment, but it's ten billion dollars to go to the screenings. Mm -hmm. And in some cases where you have some shorts, short films or short documentaries, you're going to get a bunch of them together. Then you have the filmmakers or the directors in the house to talk to you afterwards. So that's really a unique experience. And then we're going to, um, we, so individual films are ten dollars. You can get them at the box office. You can get them online. Um, so we're really hoping that people come out. That's right. 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 Yeah. Thank you all for being here this morning. Yes, we look yes. forward to seeing your films. <laughs> um, they Love all sound like you put a lot of work into them, a lot of passion as mm -hmm. well. And we can't wait to see that on screen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank all right. We're going to go ahead and take our final break. When we come back, we'll have our wrap-up. Wrap up. So stay tuned.